Hello friends, I am Shivaji Bhaskar, Faculty of Russian at the School of Foreign Languages, IGNO. I welcome you all to this course, Basics of Russian Communication Skills, Part 1. As you remember that we have been discussing about various fundamentals of the Russian grammar and phonetics. We have covered a lot of new concepts right from the beginning as the Russian alphabet, words, word combinations, grammar, such as verbs, their conjugation, as well as we have seen certain case system. In the case system, we have discussed about Predloshni Padyesh and we have seen how and when to use the questions like Gijia and Kuda, which means where and where to. So, as you know that in the previous modules, we have discussed about verbs of motion. To take it further, we will be discussing about the verbs of motion in details in this text. So please pay attention to the text and let's find out how and when to use the verbs of motion as per the requirement of this particular text. So I'll start with the first line. Moi brat ochin lubit jirebdium. Tam imu naravitsa chisti vojduk. Shirokie palya. Balshie zilionie jirebia. Jirebnia ni tak shumna. Kak gorede. Tam sio chika ispa koena. Nasha babushka živiot jirebnia. Vot drugae pritina. Pachimu brat lubit jezdis v jirebniu kashde lieta. Now we'll go further. Here, with the help of the text, you will find certain words and expressions, word combinations, where we are going to discuss about their usage in the text. So we'll go back and pay attention to the text and discuss it. Please pay attention while I translate the text for you. Moi brat ochin lubit jirevnyo. My brother loves very much village. So here we can see the construction lubit jirevnyo. So after the usage of verb lubit, any noun of the feminine gender which ends with ya changes into you. Like in this case, Lubich Jirevnu to love village. Moi brat ochin lubit jirevnu. My brother loves very much village. And likewise, you can also replace the noun with any other word. For example, Ya ochin lublu swayu stranu. I love my country very much. Ya lublu inju. I love India. Ya lublu injiskuyu kulturu. I love Indian culture. Ya lublu injiskuyu kuknu. I love Indian cuisine. So these kind of examples you can also make by yourself by applying this particular rule of the Russian grammar. Now the next line is Tam im ravitsa chisti vostu shirokie palya. So here we are talking about the village life. Why his brother likes village? Because there he likes clean air, shirokie palya, wide fields, balshie zilionie jirevia, tall green trees so you can also use some of the nouns which we have used in our previous modules and place it in this text and see how you can also improve the text so in place of chisti vozduk you can use haroshi vozduk shirokie palya balshie palya 
and Bershie Zillionia Jirebia. We saw here Zillionia Jirebia, tall green tree. So big in this sense, we have used the tall, but Bershie means big green trees. Jirebia Nitak Shumna. In the village, it is not that noisy. Shum means noise. Shumna, not noisy. Nishumna, Nitak Shumna. So these are the expressions. В городе очень шумно. In city, it's very noisy. No, but в деревне не так шумно. But in the village, it is not that noisy. Как в городе? As we see or as we experience in the city. So, как в городе? As in city. Там все тихо и спокойно. Там means in the village, все, everything is тихо, quiet. Is Pakoina. So everything is quiet and peaceful and tranquil in the village. Nasha Babushka Jivyot Jirevnia. Nasha Babushka, our grandmother, Jivyot Jirevnia, lives in village. Vot Drugaya Pritina. And there it is the reason. It is the reason. It is the second reason. Pachimu Brat Lubit. Why? Brother loves yezjit to go and come back multi direction yezjit v jirev new kash dai liata. That is why the expression kash dai liata has been used to indicate the usage of the verb from the group 2. From yekhach yezjit, we have used the yezjit which indicates multiple direction movement. So, it is another reason why brother loves to go to village every Summer. So this is about the text we have discussed and now you have a fair idea that how in Russian we use certain expressions, words, verbs with the help of we can describe the village's life and we can also compare it in a very brief manner with the life in the cities. So now we will discuss about certain words, words combinations, expressions, which we have seen in this text. So, the first one is Naravitsa. It's a verb which means to like. Mnie Naravitsa, I like. Žić v I like live in the city. So, you can also make your own questions and answers. Gije Imu Ravitsa Rich. Where does he like to live? Imu Ravitsa Rich Jirevnia. He likes to live in the village. Then the next one is Chistu. So here we have used it with the ending ui kratki, which means it is an adjective of masculine gender. You can club it with any other noun, Chisti Vozduk, Chisti Gorad, so Chisti Vozduk, we already know, fresh clean air, Chisti Gorad, fresh clean city. Then the third one is Vozduk, noun of the masculine gender. You can use Chisti Ni Chisti, you can use Plakhoe, Karoshe, Vozduk. Karoshi was the good air, Plakhoi was the bad air, Chisti was the fresh clean air. So you can also make your own sentences. Garach, be white, Chisti was In the hills or in the mountains, we have clean, fresh air. So these kind of expressions, these kind of sentences you can also make. Then we have Shiroka Pole. As we already know, Pole, neuter gender word, which means field. And we have used the adjective Shiroka as per the agreement between the noun and the adjective. Shiroka Pole, wide field. Shiroki ulitsi, wide street. Shirokaya Daroga, wide road. And 
you can make certain of the sentences while using these kind of adjectives then the next one is shumna shumna means noisy you can also make your own sentences while using shumna shumna e miesta shumna e miesta noisy place shumni gorad noisy city then the next one is spakoena spakoena means quiet spakoini chilavek a quiet person spakoina reason quiet life so these kind of sentences you can also make while using the word spakoena then the next one is pritina pritina means reason kakaya pritina pachimu on ni priyakha what is the reason why he did not come on bolen he is ill payatamu on ni priyakha that is why he could not come so you can also make questions while using the pritina then pachimu pachimu means why so most oftenly you will always be using the question pachimu because for asking any question you need to have the first word why so pachimu imu naravitsa rich jiremne why does he like to live in cities patamu statam spakoena because it's quiet there pachimu patamu statam chisti vozdok because he patamu sta imu naravitsa chisti vozdok jiremne because he likes clean fresh air in the village likewise you can also make many other questions based with on pachim so i hope you understood the text well we will be having more such text and we shall understand the meaning of glagoli dirjanya now let's go back to the text and let's find such of the verbs which we have used here the first verb we have used is lubic we already know lubic means to love so moy brat lubit jirevnyo my brother loves jirevnyo first construction then the second verb is naravitsa imu naravitsa chisti vozduk jirevnya he loves or he likes clean air of the village then we have rich the verb rich means to live we have used the construction Nasha babushka zhivyot direvne our grandmother lives in village Maya simya zhivyot goradje my family lives in the city Ya zhivu Delhi i live in Delhi Moy brat zhivyot v America my brother lives in America so these kind of questions you can make while using the same verb rich and conjugate as required and then we have another verb yezit yezit so in this we have used brat lubit yezit jirevnyu kazhde leto kazhde leto moy brat yezit jirevnyu every summer my brother goes to village so these kind of constructions these kind of sentences you can make while using different kind of verbs and in this particular text we have used different types of verbs we have conjugated them as well but at the end we have used one verb of motion which is yezd which means it indicates to and fro motion as well as multiple direction of the movement that is why we have used the expression kazhda lieta okay So I hope the concept is clear. Now let's go to some exercises. With the help of some examples, we will further define the usage of gijia and kuda. As we already know, gijia means where, whereas kuda means where to. So please pay attention to the examples. On uchit sav shkolya. On uchit sa gijia. On uchit sav shkolya. You can also replace. kola with university chair but let's see what is the change on uchit sa university che che in this case it is on uchit sa school year 
Now the next one is ya idu shkolu. Koda ya idu? As per the rule of the Russian grammar, if any word of the feminine gender has the ending with a, it should be replaced with u. Like in the case of shkola, changes into shkolu when we are using the verb of motion ichi in a conjugated form of ya. Ya idu shkolu. Koda ya idu? Ya idu shkolu. You can also replace shkola with auditoria. Ya idu auditoriu. Auditoriu sanatoriu. So here you can also replace the word shkola with any other word like bibliacheka. Ya idu bibliacheku. Bibliacheku. I am going to the library. So now the next one is on rabotait na zavode. Gije on rabotait, on rabotait na zavode. He works at the factory. So you can also replace it with fabrika if you wish. On rabotait fabrike. He works at the factory. Brat idiot na zavod. Kuda brat idiot, brat idiot na zavod. So brother is going to the plant. So likewise, you can also make your own sentences, replace the nouns which we have used here and as per the rule of the grammar, when and how do we use the ending in case of Gijia or in case of Kuda, please remember that the masculine gender in case of Gijia is replaced by Ye if it is hard ending and in case of feminine gender word in case of Gijia like Shkola it changes into shkole, shkole. However, in case of verbs of motion, shkola changes into shkolu, whereas zavod remains zavod when we use any verbs of motion like itchi. Okay, I hope the concept is clear now. Let's go ahead and pay attention to the next. So here we are going to have a form of a very small dialogue. Please pay attention. Sirgiye kudati josh. Where are you going? Sergey? Ya idu biblia cheku. I am going to the library. So specifically we have used the verbs of motion ichi and khajit. And the second one is tichasta khojish biblia cheku. Do you go often to the library? Then Sergey is answering the. So here you can see that we have used ichi and khajit both. Where in the first case we have asked about a particular direction. Kudati ijosh. Whereas when in the second question we have used the expression chasta which indicates that only verbs from the group second where we use khajich and yezij can only be used which actually determines or indicates to the movement to and fro or in multiple direction. So be very clear when and how to construct this kind of dialogue or sentences and how to and when to use these verbs of motion. All right, now let's go ahead. Here we have certain other such sentences with us. Let's pay attention. Inna Petrovna koda video che lietam. Lietam mi ejem na chor naim more. Inna Petrovna, where are you going in the, where do you go in the summer? In summer, we go to Black Sea, chor naim more. We yezi che tu da kash di god. So here we have the expression kash di god, which means we need to find the verb from the group two. So we are using da pachi kash di god. Mi yezim tu da. So we can also use the verb yezi in a conjugated form of mi da mi yezim tu da pachi kash di god. So please remember the case that deals with question kuda is not only used in the verbs of motion, but we also use it in a particular case from the case system of Russian is known as accusative case or vinichilni padyash. So with the help of the text, we have just learned that how to use different kind of expressions with the help of verbs and verbs of motion. Now we will take it further and we will quickly talk about the usage of prefixes. So in the verbs of motion, we have prefixes like v, vo, vi, pre and u. 
what does it actually mean that v means towards entering and v means to exit pre means to arrive and u means to go away or to exit or to leave so let's see how do we use these prefixes in the verbs of motion let's go ahead and pay attention to the usage so as we know that pre with the verb of motion ichikhaji signifies arrival whereas the same verb with the prefix u signifies the movement in opposite direction or departure let's understand with a few examples here we have one sentence uchnik uje prishol shkolu kuda on prishol on prishol shkolu so we have used this kind of construction that uchnik uje uchnik means the student the school children or the child who study in the school uchnik disciple uje prishol shkolu is already has arrived in the school so prishol is in the sense of arrived however the construction which we have used is prishol shol we already know is the past form singular for the masculine gender uchinik prishol kuda shkolu so this kind of construction can make with the help of prefix in this case we have used pre so now let's go ahead and pay attention to some of a few more examples like uje pozna uchinik uchli da moi uje pozna it's already late uchiniki school children ushli da moi they have gone home they have left for home so in this case we have used the prefix u u pre means to arrive u means to leave so uje pozna which means it is already late so we have understood this concept clearly now we will go ahead and pay attention to the usage of v v in positions where three consonants appear together we use v and o whereas we use only v to indicate entry so how do we use it let's see now on dolga stayal kari dohre on he dolga stayal stood for a long time kari dohre in the corridor patom on washol wauji toryu kudaon washol where did he enter where did he go he go in the auditorium so we have clearly understood is as well how and when to use the use of v and wo okay now let's go ahead here the sentence is mui sijeli doma e rasgavari wali patom mui wishli na ulitsu mui sijeli doma we sat at home e rasgavari wali and discussed and converse patom and later mui wishli na ulitsu we went out on the streets so here in this case we have used the prefix we we okay now let's go ahead and pay attention to the verb vaichi so however it is the same ichi but with the prefix wo so conjugation will remain same as in the case of ichi ya vaidu ti va josh onana vaijot mi vaijom vi vaijo che ani vaidut and now we will discuss another verb of motion with the prefix now let's go ahead it's vaichi vaichi so it means to go out in one direction ya vui idu ti vui josh onana vui jot mu vui jom vui vui joche ani vui dut so we have understood how do we use these two different concepts v and v v means to enter and v means to exit that is why when you go to places where you will find signages in russian if it is enter it would be khajich khod means to enter and likewise vichi vikhad vikhad means to exit exit like in the cinema halls or in the restaurants or in the airplanes wherever you go you will find these kind of suggestions khod and vikhad means to enter or enter or exit simply like that so please pay attention to these important prefixes because these are the prefixes which actually gives the identification to certain verbs and define their role in the construction of sentences where we need to very clearly tell about the arrival or departure entry or exit so we always use the prefixes and it makes the 
Russian conversation, Russian grammar, very rich and diverse. Okay, now we will go ahead. So, as in all verbs, in this we also have the past tense. So, for ya tui on singular, we have vashul. Yesli, if we have ya tui ana, then vashla. If we have plural, mui vui ani, then vashli. Like in the next case as well, if we go ahead and see that how do we use vui chi. So, for vui chi in past tense is ya tui on, vui shall. Whereas in case of ya tui ana is vui shla. Whereas in the case of mui, vui and plural ani, it is vui shli. So, like you have also seen that how the pronunciation of these verbs in a conjugated form in past tense is ya ti on vui shel, shel, vui shel, ya ti ana vui shla, vui shla and mui vui ani vui shli. Okay, so I hope this vui chi and vui chi is clear to you. Now, let us go ahead and pay attention to some of the other verbs with prefixes like pre. So, pre ichi means to come one time. Ya pre du, ti pre josh, on ana pre jot, mui pre jom, vi pre joche, ani pre dut, pre dut. So, pre means to come. So, it is a one direction that is why ichi, pre chi, pre khajich means to come multi direction. Okay? So, now we will go to the next verb uichi, uichi which means to go away one time. Prichi, the opposite of prichi is uichi, to go away. Ya uidu, ti uijos, on na uijot, mui uijom, vi uijoche, ani uidut. And then we have some more verbs. Let us go ahead. Here we will conjugate them in past times. For prichi, we have prishol, for ya ti on. For ya ti ana, it's prishla. For mui vi ani, it's prishli. And same is the case in the uichi on ya ti on ushol. Ya ti ana, then it's ushla. If we have mui vi ani in plural, then we have ushli. So prishol, ushol, prishla, ushla, prishli, ushli. Like this, you can also make your own table and Note them down in your notebook and try to understand what is the basic difference between these verbs, especially when we place a prefix and then conjugate in the present form as well as in the past form and try to make some sentences so that you have an absolute clarity about the usage and the meaning of these verbs with prefixes of the verbs of motion in Russian grammar. So now let's go ahead and pay attention to a few verbs. In this case, we have khajij. So from first one, we have used the verbs which has one direction to a particular direction to a particular movement. Now we are taking some verbs which indicates to and fro motion, repetitive motion as well as multiple direction movement. So, we have the first one with us is khajij means to enter. Yav khaju, tiv khojish, onanav khojit, muiv khojim, viv khojiche, anif khojir. Now, let's go to the next verb. So, before that, let's understand and learn the past form of this. Ya ti on khajil. Simple is the case because in past tense, we need to only translate and only need to conjugate it. We only need to conjugate in the past tense as khajil singular for ya ti ana khajila, whereas for plural mui vui ani khajili, khajili anif khajili fchatr kajde vecharam anif kho anif khajili fchatr ani chasta khajili. So, these kind of sentences you can also make while using the conjugated form of khajij in past tense. Prosh lai god on khajil chatr. So, these kind of sentences you can make with the help of khajij. 
so now we will go ahead here we have vikhajij which means to go out ya vikhaju ti vikhojish on ana vikhojit mi vikhojim vi vikhojite ani vikhojit now let's look at the conjugation in the past form ya ti on vi khajil ya ti ana vi khajila mi vi ani vi khajile so i hope the concept is absolutely clear to you when and how to use the verbs of motion in group 1 and group 2 with prefixes like v v pre and u so that you can make your own sentences which are related to the verbs of motion i hope you all enjoyed this module and we will be discussing about it further in the upcoming modules and we will start talking we will discuss about the case system in details and we have some exercises of the cases of the russian grammar as well thank you